Okay, I'd like to introduce at this point um, the head of our investigative desk, Ms. Chai Hofilenya. Thank you, Zach. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, we will be having um, a discussion later on, but before that, uh, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker. Very, very important person. Uh, he said he was, Maria managed to drag him here from, from Albay. So please welcome Governor Joey Salceda. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Pumunta tala ako dito para maawa kayo sa akin. <laughs> ah, yun ba ang tanong? Uh, Unang-una, um, first let me disabuse what your casualty is all about. It's not a statistic, it's not a number. It's a body of commitments by a community to ensure that development can proceed amidst all the risk and that no one should fall by the wayside due to poverty, due to exposure, or due to even stubbornness. Stubbornness is not even an acceptable alibi for being a casualty due to disaster. Ang tagal naman na ano ko. <laughs> and Saldi. So, at yun, mas gusto kong sagutin sa inyo kung hindi na po yung kung paano, kundi yung why. Bakit zero casualty? Ano yung benefits ng zero casualty? Kasi akala ng tao, we are going after it um, simply because it is an ordinance. Although we made it into an ordinance, Ang ibig sabihin, isa po tong articulation ng goals. We consider zero casualty as a good goal, as a holy desire of the people of Albay. And in order to achieve our social prosperity, and it in fact ensures that uh, prosperity is more socially, um, more socially shared. Hindi nyo kaya? Dalhin mo na lang dito, dito lang may sasalita. Okay, thank you. Next. Ngayon lang po ako, konti slide, anim lang. Usually, I have 184 slides. Okay. Uh, DRR is a human endeavor that enables development to proceed in the midst of risk and that no one should fall by the wayside due to poverty, exposure, or even stubbornness. Next. Ano ba yung filosofia? Lagi naririnig yung building back better. Actually, the philosophy should be build better. Take away the back and you keep all seeing all these t-shirts in Sambanga with build Better, the back is in the middle. Why should you just erase the back? We just go proceed, build better. Because that means next, it means cultural reduction. There's nothing to uh, rescue if nobody is in harm's way. And nobody is in harm's way if everybody is relocated. But that's a very expensive proposition. Next. Ang pangalawa po, anong sik ang kung mayroong konting sikreto ang Albay is what I call social cohesion. And we really invested a lot of our yung ating kami pong mga efforts to build a strong domestic policy consensus kung sa economics po. Dahil yun po nakita kong sikreto ng Korea, Taiwan, Japan, bakit sila talaga nag-progress sa societies? Because they were able to mold <laughs> Oh, say, ito, ito yung mabuti para sa atin. So, para po mga mangyari yan, kailangan mo talaga na, well, good governance is already a, a must. It's a norm. It's, a, it's something that cannot be traded off for anything. You st everything starts forth from it. Next. Pero good governance for something. <laughs> It cannot be naman na just good governance. You have a very excellent process. You're very good at something that doesn't mean anything anymore. So it should be good governance for a higher goal, a goal higher than ourselves. Means millennium development goals, zero casualty, and of course, building better lives. And number four, I think it should be rights-based. 
laging tinatanong, paano na kung wala na ako sa Albay? Everybody in Albay knows that when you go to a evacuation center, you get five kilos for any reason. For as long as you cooperate with the provincial government, you get five kilos of rice every day for as long as you cooperate with the provincial government. It's your right. And therefore, any effort to institutionalize your scarcity should make it a right. It's a rights-based approach. And lastly, you cannot do it alone. So first, hindi lang po yung budget ng uh, DRR, kundi pati budget po ng provincial engineering, budget po ng provincial social work, lahat po sila are harnessed towards achieving uh, zero casualty or disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. So dapat whole of government, it should be seamless. In fact, uh, I don't know whether we, I could say I perfected Team Albay OCD 5. We have done 12 major humanitarian uh, missions Ang sabi ko nga sa Diyos, eh, alam mo, um, <laughs> lagi ako nakikiusap sa, mabuti na dito si Yusek Pama. Dahil po sa DRR 10121, ang albay po sa mabuting, eh kami po nakaipo ng 154 million. Kasi yung 70%, hindi po talaga namin ginagastos. Kasi wala naman po talaga dumating na mga bagyo sa albay. So sabi ko sa Diyos, wag nyo na ako kami targetin. Lahat po na ma-save ko, gamitin ko na lang para tulungan yung ituturo nyo. E kaso tinamaan ako ng Glenda at tinamaan po ako ng Mayon. But right now, for example, I, when Mayon struck, I already had 19 million in QRF, I have 54 million in unexpended balances, and 125 million that I have built up under Republic Act 10121. So, baka kala nyo yung zero casualty eh, ganun-ganun lang. Ang taas po nang iniingi ito sa atin. Dahil napakataas, hindi po pwede po, you have to go for Miss Universe. You cannot go for Miss for second runner-up. Because once you go for Miss Universe, the whole system from your toe up to your hair, you must produce that ambiance and aura of winningness if you really want to go for it. You have to go for Miss Universe. And zero casualty in DRR is Miss Universe. Ayaw kong gamitin yung gold standard kasi baka makompare ko sa diamond star. <laughs> si Maria kasi dami-dami nito eh. Pan pandaya ng mga salita ito eh. Next. <laughs> this is for my third slide. This is more personal for me. I am, this betrays my Jesuitical background. What is the philosophical foundation of zero casualty? It's Immanuel Kant. It's really categorical imperative. What you do to one, you do to all. If you cannot do to all, don't do at all. Meaning to say, the proof of the goodness of anything in life is the universal, it's its universalizability. So zero casualty means everybody must live. That is the converse. It's just negatively proposed. Zero casualty means everybody must have equal chances to achieve prosperity, to achieve their dreams for themselves and for their family. And to myself, which I learned, I came from a family of seven nuns, a mother as a teacher and a father as a teacher. And I can tell you that from way back until I grew up, kahit kumbaga sa ano eh, laging mabait lang. I have never, in my political life, I've never accused, I never uttered anything negative about anyone. I can probably say something on policy, but neg negative uh, adversarial politics was never part of my strategy. It was always constant kindness. So these two things about categorical imperative and constant kindness can immediately provide you with a basis of why you must pursue. Because it's far more important for me for you to understand the why. Why zero casualty? Anyway, I'll give you a text. Pasensya na, tinanggal ko yung mukha ko ah. Next. So, makikita niyo po sa Albay, hindi naman po ako nagpasimula niya ni. Eh. In 18 out of 20 years, Albay had zero casualty in 18 years out of 20 years. And principally, it's because we were first in Asia to establish a local disaster management offices. 
when in fact we had laws that asked for disaster, disaster, how do you call that, councils, albeit established a permanent disaster management office way back in 1994, 20 years ago. And in those 20 years, we had only two casualties, two years with casualties. Next. And that should give you an example. Durian, which is one of the years we had casualties, 46% of Albay GDP was affected. But by pursuing, by going for zero casualty, even let's say the, the positive side of zero casualty, next. Look what Albay is seven years after Reming. We had zero casualty in 18 of 20 years. Bicol is now the fastest growing region with 9.4% in 2013. In 2006, I had 8,704 in tourists. Now I have 339. I have increased my forest cover by 88%, my mangrove plantation by four folds. My standing in national achievement test from 177 in 2007 to number 19 in 2012 and number 29 in 2013. <laughs> UNICEF PIDS said, my participation rate in elementary is 98%, and my dropout rate is 0.3%, one-fourth of national average. I had only 34,000 college graduates. Now I had, I will have 188,000, with 77,137 77, of them funded directly by the provincial government. From PhilHealth of only 17,000, I increased it to one. So I am the only province certified by PhilHealth as universal feel universal coverage. My maternal mortality last year was only nine out of 26,782 mothers. Compare that to the national, two to one. My MMR is only 33. How shameful. I know, I'm not getting any pat in the back for it. I have achieved all my health MDGs early in 2011. From 2007 until now, my population increased by only 66,580 or less than 10,000 per year. No births, no deaths. <laughs> <laughs> That's exposure management for zero casualty. You can have a thousand Mayan volcano if there are no people inside. Then there's no risk. There's no risk. You have the hazard with no exposure. That's no risk. And of course, lastly, I've increased my rice self-sufficiency from 73 to 94%. We achieved that by going for zero casualty. It's not as if the zero casualty is all about a number. It's a body of commitments which puts the entire committee or the entire community helping each other, fending for each other, being a good neighbor, and more than that, being a good, bro good brother. Next. So what is the zero casualty strategy next? First, just make it a goal. I don't know, every time we said we are in a disaster mode, the first thing we issue is advisory number one. The province hereby reiterates that zero casualty is the goal for this disaster. And it's a good goal, socially desirable and desirably ambitious goals. Yet there are holy desires of my community of my people. Next. Then, of course, you have to ordain policies to achieve them. Next. Ito po yung ginagawa namin sa tabi. Then you have to give it a budget. Hindi lang po yung 10%, 5%. Kundi yung buong budget. The whole budget. The logic, the fiscal logic should be, should have zero casualty in all its itemizations. Next. Then, of course, you have to execute programs and projects. Next. And then you have to build institutions so people will have an anchor. And you cannot do it alone next. So you have to nurture partnerships and mobilize resources. Next. So ito pa yung highlight ng mga ginagawa namin. Uh, risk mapping. Pero para makita nyo kaagad, next. Yan po ang risk assessment namin. Next. Every beginning of the year, we make a budget. 
limang bagyo, isang potok na bulkano, isang ang marami po low intensity disasters, yung mga disaster na walang pangalan. They come with LPA, ICT set, ITT set, uh, tail and TECF, yan po yung mga walang pangalan. So we budget them because we only have so much money. But it is budgetable. Even if it's not budgetable, there is enough basis for you to make a rational allocation of resources so that you are prepared for them. Like this mayon, back. Sa mayon, ngayon, alam niya ni Sir, 12,000 ngayon nakatago ko per 26,000 ang affected. Kasi kung pumutok na yan, may dadagdag kami. Ang tawag doon, the surge. Ang ibig sabihin, there will be a surge of, kasi kahit ang dyan lang yung laba, pero dito feeling mo, ikaw, ikaw sinasadya ng Diyos sa dami ng kasalanan mo. So, <laughs> so, so sabi mo, nako patay ka. Eh, walang, anyway, next. So let's see. Right now, we're in the 24th day. What has happened for Dalbay? Ano ibig sabihin ng zero casual? Sabi ko, it's a body of commitments. So, ano ba yung mga simpleng tanong? Yung mga pwede bang mamatay, nailabas mo na sa sona? Answer, yes. Yung mga nilabas mo ba, inaalagaan mo ng tama? Yes. Yung kanila bang dangal, hindi na kompromiso dahil sa displacement? Ang sagot, yes. Then you are achieving zero casualty already. It's not the number. It is the body of commitments of a community to look after the welfare of each other. So look at what's happened now. Alam mo, yung, alam mo mga, may mga media dito, no? Hahanap at hahanap na nega yan. Pero sasabihin ko sa inyo, eh oo, oh, mas nega, mas nega senri pa nga yung mga yan eh. Unang-una, yung morbidity rates ko sa loob, mas mababa definitely kay nandun sila sa dati. Number two, yung morbidity rates doon sa loob ng kampo ko, mas mababa kaysa sa labas. Mas maraming may sipon ubo kasi they are not being attended to. Sa labas ng sona, sa labas ng kampo. Pangalawa, mortality. Ang mortality rate sa Albay is 0.8% per year. Dapat ang namamatay in a 55,000 population, 36, 24 days na, apat pa lang. In 2009, we had 94 days. Ang dapat mamatay, 106. Ang namatay lang na na-record sa amin, 24. Because nadadala namin sa hospital. Yung lahat ng 45 evacuation center, kung may clinic yan, tatlong nurses, may EMT training. Tapos sila po ay clinic ng isang tertiary hospital. So ang referral system, ay eh, automatic. So they're being cared for. At pagising sa umaga, may limang kilong bigas, may ulam pa. Hindi lang maling. <laughs> Pangatlo, yung 83, salamat po sa UNICEF. Ako, I never imagined I can do this. And of course, to Secretary Pama for helping us. Hindi ko may imagine yun na yung 83, 45 sa labo, loob, 38 sa labas, 45 nilabas ko, di walang klase, Gagamitin ko yung 38, pero may lima pa kaming kulang. So, yung 83, balik sa klase in 10 days. So, may rapler ngayon, nagamit ng word plague. Kung plague ang albay, Jesus Mario Joseph, di ano na yung landa? You call that what? You use the word plague? Yes, that's the day, but okay. So, ano na yung Sambuanga? Ang tawag mo dun? Can you please invent more perverse? <laughs> yes, but the, the risk are given. It's what you do about them that essentially shapes the direction and the complexion of human welfare. Hindi na yani. Ni ko mama palis si mayung bukino. Ayo ko rin mo malis yung mga tao. So, kailangan matuto tayo mabuhay. Alam mo, noong 1984, bumutok ang bulkan. Sunod-sunod. Walang namatay sa albay. 
74,000 sabi ng United Nations DR UNDRO ang nilikas ng albay. Ngayon nililikas ko 55,000 lang. Ano nangyari? Dapat 134,000 assuming 2% demographic growth. Bakit 55,000 lang? Kasi dalawa. One, state-sponsored relocation. Second, community-initiated adaptation. Ayaw naman namin mamatay. Although kung pumasok ka sa zona ngayon, it's suicide. Ganyan nyo ba kung gano'ng kasama ang vulkan? Pag pumutok yan, 116 kilometers up, pambagsak niyan parang gravity, 500 kilometers per hour, 1,200 Fahrenheit. Wala kang kawala dyan. Automatic sentensya mo. Death penalty. Anyway, ang attendance ngayon sa loob ng mga evacuation center ko, 90% ang nire-require ng four piece, 85. Pero nagna-90 ako, mas mataas pa kaysa sa labas. Siyempre, kinukulong ko. Pangam, panglima, ni isang krimen. Walang na-record sa pito, sa 45, sa asang libong rooms. Kung ang tao, alam nila na para sa kabutihan nila yan, at hindi para sa iilan, sila mismo ang gagawa ng paraan. So makikita mo po dito na araw-araw po, lahat ng, lahat ng PNP blatter pinapadala yan sa probinsya. Kinocompile namin. Makikita nyo doon, zero crime. So kaya, kaya pala dapat pumutok ka ngayon araw-araw. Hindi naman, pero ang sinasabi ko na ang zero casualty ay may positibong benepisyo. Hindi yan, you don't pursue it, you don't look it at it simply as a cost. It is an investment in human development. So, dyan na lang po ako magtatapos at uh, sana nakapagambag ako sa ating pong um, emerging domain ng kaalaman para po mas mapagbuti natin ang commitment ng Pilipinas para sa human development at ang isa sa mga importanteng pandayan o haligi ng human development sa Pilipinas ay zero casualty during disaster. Salamat po sa inyo lahat.